What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. What's happening, Wolfpack and Cool Kids? It's your boy, See this So Cool, and I'm back again with another video, guys. This time, I'm bringing you a story time. This is a story time about when I was in the military, all right, guys, which is kind of obvious, okay? Um, these three people right here, they were over this whole division. That's crazy, right? Three people had to control a division of 88 people. We were all recruits, so I can't call us sailors because at the time, we hadn't become sailors. But um, we definitely did by the end of that two month course, what they like to call boot camp. Um, but guys, you see me right there holding the E for excellence. <laughs> I'm sorry guys, I'm just over here in my feelings right now. Like this is so crazy. Just looking at this picture and talking to you guys about it. But let's just jump onto the story time. Something else guys, um, very important to me when I was in the military. This is the Sailor's Creed. I had to learn this and recite this every single day. Um, with my division so it used to sound really really crunk in there with 88 people screaming the Sailor's Creed Haven't said it in a long time guys, but it's there for you to see it if you want to recite it at home Feel free to do so man And this right here is just a picture which many of you have already saw because I had one of them downstairs in my office um, Yeah, that's me basically my graduation picture um, if that's what you would like to call it from the Navy Without further ado guys, I bring to you my military story time. We start the story out first when I was in high school, okay? Let's say senior year. So it's 2006 headed towards 2007. And I, I'm at school just chilling on lunch hour break like uh, every other kid would be. You know, you go outside on lunch hour, you just chill with your friends. Um, but I was on the wing where you can see cars pulling up and around. I wasn't in the back shooting hoops or nothing lame like that. Not even to call it lame, but at the time, you know, I wasn't at school trying to get dirty and sweaty. You know, I was on my fresh stuff, but it just ain't about that. Anyway, like I said, I was in high school. It was a summer day, and I remember it just like it was yesterday. This um, recruiter, he pulls up to my school in an Escalade. It's like a 2005 Escalade, and like I said, it's, 20, it's 2006 at the time. Um, he pulls up in a brand new Escalade on like some 24 inch rims, and I'm just looking at it like, oh my God. That is what I want for myself in the future. Everybody on the, the whole school campus was looking at his car like, whoa, you know, he pulled up stunting. We just in high school, so we don't got nothing. Um, but at the time, I would have done anything just to have a car like that because that's just how I was, you know. I didn't really think too big at the time. All I wanted was a nice flashy car and a nice outfit with some clean J's. That's all I wanted. I ain't want much, man. But, you know, um, what happened after that moment, after he pulled up, I low-key made a decision in my own mind to walk up to this man and ask him what he did for a living because I was interested, right? I already had this in my mind. But when he gets out the car, he dressed in all white, got the sailor hat on and got his uniform on, all his medals and ribbons on. And I'm like, whoa, what the, like this dude in the military? Are you kidding me? I thought he was a drug dealer or something, you know? But yeah, sure enough, he was in the military. And as I'm headed on my way to him, He's walking in my direction as well, and we just instantly link. I'm like, hey, what's going on? I'm Cordero. And he's like, hey, I'm such and such and such. Petty officer, blah, 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 whatever. So this petty officer, he told me like, yeah, I can tell that you're obviously interested in my car and his lifestyle. He was like, but you know, this comes with a price. Like this ain't no job, you know what I'm saying? This is a lifestyle. And he was trying to explain to me how deeply, seriously I should be trying to take this. You know, I shouldn't be just coming up to him like, hey, if it pays, I'll, I'm with it. It should be more, you know what I'm saying? I should have more reason to try to join the military. Basically, is what he was trying to tell me. But at the time, I was in high school, and all I can remember was I lived with my great-grandmother and my grandmother. They didn't have good credit. They didn't have a good job. They weren't rich. You know, they didn't have rams on their car. They couldn't provide me these types of luxuries. So I just wanted to do what I needed to do to get there and forget what he was talking about or anybody else who was trying to deter me from going to the military because, like I said, I already had made up in my mind that I was going to do exactly what he was doing to get what he had. <laughs> now... Um, what happened after that was he informed me that I needed to take some type of test. It was called the ASVAB test. Uh, it was like a three hour test. Now I hated tests, bro. There's not a bone in my body that I can say loves tests. Like, do you love tests? Exactly, I knew you didn't. I didn't even have to ask you that because I already knew the answer. Just had a quick conversation with myself. That was weird. But anyway, guys, he told me I'd take the three hour test. But one major thing that like, 
gave me all the energy I needed to take this test was I didn't have to take the SAT no more. So it was like, either you gotta take the SAT or you take the ASVAB. But either way, you gotta take a test. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna skip the SAT, I'm gonna do the ASVAB, and I'm gonna do damn good on it too because I wasn't no dummy. I, w I might have been a class clown. You know, I've always had everybody laughing. I was always laughing, telling jokes, probably never paying attention, but I did comprehend very well. Like if you told me two plus two is four, I'm not gonna forget in four minutes. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna remember the answer is four. Um, anyway, I passed the ASVAB test. Like not with flying colors. I'm not gonna sit here and say I got a 99 because I didn't. But I did get like an 82, something like that. It was good. An 82 is really, really good because you only need like a, a 52 to get accepted into the Navy and like a 40 to get accepted into the Army. You needed a 70 to go to like the Air Force. It's crazy. Like you need to score high to get selected to these specific branches or whatever. But I wanted the Navy. I didn't want to go to the Air Force because I had never seen anybody from the Air Force. And like I said, it wasn't, I didn't go to the military. And I'm just keeping it 1,000 with y'all. In 2006, when I signed up and took that test and graduated in 2007 and went to boot camp, it was not because I wanted to serve my country. That is just me being honest. But that's no disrespect to anyone. You know, anybody who already served in the military for whatever reason, especially if it was to serve your country only, you know, I give you my props. Thank you. I really respect you. I look up to you. You guys are what we stand for as a nation, you know, so... Hey, I definitely look up to you guys, but I had different plans for my future. I'm just saying. Um, so what I did as soon as I passed that test is I went to boot camp with those pictures, what I showed you in the beginning. That's where I was taking those pictures at or whatever. I was um, enrolled into a division with 88 people. It was division 380. Um, the first day, as soon as I got to boot camp off the bus, no, 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 I'm skipping, I'm skipping, skipping, skipping. Before I even got to boot camp, this is how they treated me, y'all. I'm telling you this before you join. Any one of you guys that's thinking about joining the military, I'm going to give you the straight raw material up front. They treated me like a king, okay? As soon as I signed up, passed the test, everything. They sent me to this hotel, like free food, free breakfast, hotels free, everything. There's people there, girls there, dudes there, everybody going to the military. We all there, we linking up and stuff. I'm there for like a day or two. I can't remember, I think it was a day. But either way, I woke up the next day and I get on a bus and boom, it's off to Chicago. Uh, Great Lakes, that's where it was at. My training facility, my boot camp was at Great Lakes, Illinois. So they take us to Great Lakes, we all on the bus, we having fun, we chilling, we talking, hey, hey, lit on the bus, you know. As soon as we get off, everything just stopped. It's like the DJ made a mistake and the record skip, you know what I'm saying? Dude, they were yelling at us, spitting on us, and just like basically pushing us around. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck, this shit crazy, B. So they pack us all up in this big room and it's already other people in there. So my division had 88 people in there. So let's just put it like this. It was 10 other divisions in there. Do the math. It was about 800 some people in a room and we all just standing there and they like, stand tight, don't move. Don't talk, don't do nothing. Just stand tight. We all standing tight. We don't even know what stand tight mean, but basically stand tight mean don't freaking move, right? So we standing there. And before I know it, two days later, I'm still standing there. And me, I don't know about you, I, le I need like chapstick, Carmax, you know what I'm saying? Some type of solution for my lips. I always do, man. I always keep it in my pocket. Mm. But there, they stripped us for all our stuff. Our clothes, our shoes, our socks, our drawers, everything we had in our pockets, they took it and it was replaced with white tidy whitey drawers, um, navy white socks, um, navy uh, sweatpants, navy sweatshirt, and an all-white t-shirt with your name stamped on it. That's all they gave us. They took all my swag and gave me their swag. And they forgot to give me Carmack. So I was literally in that room thinking I was going to die. I'm like, is this the end? Is this the end of my life? My lips all bleeding and stuff all chapped up. But it was their way of kind of breaking us, you know? You can't go into the military thinking, oh, I get it my way. Or I'm going to get my Carmax when I need it. Or, you know what I'm saying? Because if you out there at war, ain't no Carmax. So I guess that's what they were trying to teach me in the beginning. But um, after that, we were end up getting assigned to a division. Like I said, it was 88 of us. So they put us in our room where all these bunk beds in there. It's crazy. We got these two petty officers and this chief. The chief was the lady. And then the two petty officers were our other like leaders or whatever. They was always yelling at us, snapping on us, making us do push-ups and stuff. And it was always, and I repeat, always musty in my boot camp. Like, all of us working out, you know, 88 dudes, testosterone everywhere, sweat everywhere. It was musty. Trust me, you didn't want to be in there. 
Um, we used to have to take showers together. Like these were all the uncomfortable things I had to go through in the military because me personally, I never played no sports in high school ever. So I'm not or wasn't used to showering with other dudes and you know what I'm saying, getting that comfortable. Not that I got something to hide or oh my, I ain't one of them dudes, you know what I'm saying? But it's just to a point, you know, it's like what the heck is really going on? Um, but that wasn't the the highlight of boot camp, so let's just skip fast forward and pass all that. Um, a couple of things that I can actually say good about boot camp, things that I remember and I probably won't ever forget. One, they chose me to be what they like to call a rock. They have an RPOC and an A-Rock, a president and a vice president. I was the vice president. The president was just this other guy. He was a he was Caucasian. He was a cool dude, but he didn't really have any cool traits. I mean, I didn't understand why he was the number one leader and it wasn't me. Not saying that, you know, I think I deserve everything, but hey, first of all, you should always think you deserve everything, but I was really that dude and I'm still that same dude. I've never changed, guys. I've always been that guy that wanted all the attention and could handle all the attention. I'm not gonna freeze up, choke up, you know what I'm saying? Ugh, that ain't me. Anyway, um, my position was I had to lead the whole Whole, I mean like all of us, the whole division in cadence as we marched every single day. That was my job. I had to make sure we looked good when we marched. His job was just to hold the sword and just walk in the front. He too had to listen to my command. So if it wasn't me leading us, even him, he couldn't move. So it was kind of crazy that they even named him number one position. But we ain't even gonna talk about all that, man, because we, we ain't gonna talk about all that. Anyway, um, I think that it was one of the coolest parts about the military for me because I got to lead, you know what I'm saying? I got to lead in a position where my chest was held high, my head was up high, and I was always smiling, you know, because this is like, I was the man of all men, you know? It wasn't something like, I really can't think of nothing to compare it to right now, but you guys should get what I'm saying. It was really, really, it was a good experience or whatever. Um, but for some of you that don't know what leading the, the division and cadence even means or what marching means, I'll give you an example of what I did on a daily. We woke up, we took showers, we shaved, we took a shit or whatever, excuse my language, and then we woke, we got in line and we walked outside. And this was my job. This is when my job started, I should say. This is when I would say something like, division, attention. Everybody's at attention now, you know? We're all just standing there waiting. Next thing I would say, forward, march. Everybody starts marching on my cue. Now, one is, le let's just say this, all odd numbers are left. All even numbers are right. So if I say one, that means step with your left foot. If I say two, that meant to step with your right foot. So I just used to seeing cadences where I would only implement numbers one through four. And I would just, you know, mix and match it up. Some days I would sound like this, some days I would sound like that, but it would always go like this. Division, attention, forward, march. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one. One and that's one, are and a boy, two, are they a boy, two, are they a boy, they want. And I used to just do that or whatever, and no matter how I mixed it up, it would always lead them on the right, left, right, left. Like, it would never be that I would have them hitting the left foot two times. You know what I'm saying? I always kept the division intact. We looked great. Like, we won so many awards just off of my voice alone. Like, we used to walk through the whole, like, because Great Lakes is so big, and there's so many divisions going on at once, you can't be the only one. So when we're walking down the street, these other divisions have no choice but to hear me. Same as we have no choice but to hear them. But if you got CJ so cool, you're gonna be, you know what I'm saying? I'm drowning out every other division. I got us looking good to the point where they're looking at us saying, what the heck? And then they're over there sounding like this. This is how normal divisions would sound. One, two, 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 a three, a four, one, two, two. That's how they used to sound. But that, that was cool with me because I was doing my own thing. And like I said, I always switched it up. Some days I sounded Jamaican. Some days, you know, I, I never knew how I would feel that day. But most of the time, I like had the sorest throat from doing this because I had to be loud. 88 people got to hear me. So I'm basically screaming, you know. Um, but for lunch, they used to make sure I had lemon just to make sure my throat was always good. And, you know, because... I had to keep my voice. It was no, oh, I'm sick today. I gotta take a day off. No one else could do what I did in my whole division. You should have saw when we had tryouts for this position. Everybody was trying to sing. I was literally the only one who didn't want to audition. Because at the time, I was just trying to like, just fit in. I don't want to stand out when I was in boot camp, at least. I didn't want to because you don't want 87 dudes mad at you 
for being a teacher's pet, quote unquote, you know? And that's what I ended up being. I ended up being the person who the chiefs and the petty officers, they love. They never snapped really on me solely, or they never really, you know, tried to hurt my feelings in front of everybody, but that's what they did. So it's like, I really got to go through boot camp with a breeze. I got to pass every test. I got to, I was never up late at night, stressed out, you know, but it was a lot of people who went through those things. People that wanted to commit suicide, wanted to drop out, wanted to go see their moms. But I wasn't that guy. I was having too much fun in boot camp. I met a lot of friends, man, a lot of friends. And it was just, it was a really great experience. It started to change me low key. While I was in boot camp, I began to change because it went from me wanting to go to the Navy for money to me actually enjoying it. Like, what the heck? This is crazy. I just got straight out of high school. I didn't think that being basically put back in high school would be this fun because boot camp is school. You got people telling you what to do, when to do it, when to eat, when to go to sleep. So it's worse than school. It's like jail. But I ended up enjoying it. And upon graduating, when I was graduating, guys, they had some people come in there and they was recruiting like the top of the top of all the divisions. They wanted the best of the best. That's it. You had to be at least six foot tall. You had to be handsome or fine if you was a girl. You had to just have all these credentials, right? Your test scores had to be high because you had to be smart or whatever. But anyway, they ended up drafting me. I was so excited when my chief came to me and she said, yo, Brady, because I was Airman Brady. Um, even though I was in the Navy, I was going to the Navy to be an airman. Anyway, guys, when my chief came to me and told me that I had been selected by the presidential honor guard, I was like, First of all, what's the presidential honor guard? Second of all, selected, what, what, you mean? what does this mean? You know what I'm saying? Like, that don't sound too good. Um, but she was telling me like, no, that means you are selected to be the face of the Navy. They want you. I'm like, oh my God. So I called my mama, my grandma anyway. I called my grandma, yo mom, they called me up to be working for the president. Like what's really going on? Like I'm late right now. You need to tell the city that your son has officially made it. So I graduate from boot camp. They give me a couple days off. I re revisit my city. I go back to Gary, Indiana, and they got the news reporters at the school for me when I show up. It was like Memorial Day or something. It was 2008 now. I'm at a school at Roosevelt High School. Camera reporters around me taking pictures and stuff, recording me. I'm doing my little speech and they're asking me how I like the military and working for the president. And at the time I hadn't started yet working for him, but I did get selected. And somehow they found out. Now I know I'm on my grandma, so it was crazy. Like how the city had reached all the way to my boot camp and found out some valuable information that somebody from Gary was selected to work for the president. And at the time, I was the first person to ever get selected for that job from my city. So I was literally putting my city on the map. It was a really great like feeling. It was the president was George Bush at the time, but I didn't care who the president was. It was still, you know, it was tight. It don't get no better than that. So after my little break at home or whatever, and I come back after doing a news report and all that, it was actually newspaper articles with me in it. But my grandma said they got destroyed when her house got rained in. You saw her house. It wasn't looking too good when we saw it from the outside. So imagine the inside. But anyway, this ain't about that. Um, I ended up coming back and then I had to, um, I found out that I had to do two more months of basically boot camp, but this time for the presidential honor guard. So I flew to Washington, DC. I was on Andrews Air Force Base and boot camp went from bad to worse because the presidential honor guard's boot camp is like literally only ranked under, and this is according to like, uh, uh, you can Google this. The presidential honor guard training is only ranked under the Navy SEAL. So they are serious. They treat you like you finna go be in a war with the Navy SEAL or something. And all you really doing is holding flags, spinning guns, and casket bearing, holding caskets and stuff. Looking good, basically. But they basically tortured us, okay? I was in there getting tortured, bro. The only thing good I could say about them was unlike boot camp at Great Lakes, they gave us apartments. So we was in boot camp, but once we got off of boot camp, we was able to go to our apartment and it was tight because we all stayed in the same complex. So we would be able to go down the hall to our friend's house, you know, and talk bad about our, our commanding officer or whatever. <laughs> we used to do stuff like that. But um, man, once I finally graduated that boot camp, it was lit. Everything was lit. I joined the Casket Bears team. And what that means is I joined the team of the biggest dudes in the Navy. I wanted to work out, get buff, and carry caskets for a living. That's what I ended up doing, guys, which is why um, I first finally started working out because all through high school, I wasn't working out. I was skinny and fresh. 
But as soon as I went to the Navy and graduated boot camp and started going up the chain of ladder, I'm like, yo, I need to get big. So I started working out, getting big, getting big, and it was so fun to me until I tore seven ligaments in my lower back. Now, this is when my naval career started just going down the drain, bro. Now, when I tore seven ligaments in my lower back, they were taking care of me. You know, they got military uh, doctors on deck. You know, they got stuff like that for you. But the way they were looking at me after I did this, it was kind of like I was damaged goods. So I began to, you know, feel some type of way about the Navy. First of all, I only joined for money. Second of all, I didn't broke my back for y'all. And now you basically saying the hell with you. The way I was, I'm just saying it was a vibe I was getting. No one actually said these physical words to me, but I was getting a negative vibe from everybody. It was like I did something wrong. You know what I'm saying? But long story short, my presidential honor guard career was supposed to last for two entire years. But after my back got messed up and I basically ended up being on leave for so long, they sent me to Virginia. Now, once I got to Virginia, I ended up going to a real ship. And I was not used to that, even though that's what the Navy is all about, living on a ship, living on the water and stuff. I wasn't used to that, and I didn't want to get used to it because the first day on the ship was the worst day of my life. I was too tall, I was too fresh, and like it just didn't, it just didn't sit in well with me. Like my heart was hurt because it first of all, <laughs> I forgot to mention the money part. Never did the money part ever even like occurred to me that this dude with this Escalade, I'm gonna ever, I'm gonna be on his level one day. I was never at the rate I was going anyway, was gonna get an Escalade with ramps. It just wasn't happening. I believe I was getting paid on the first and the 15th of every month and my checks was 1500. So I was getting $3,000 a month. Now that may sound like a lot, but dude, I worked for the military, which means that's like my salary. My salary is 3000 a month. And if you know what a salary is, that means you have to go to work. And if you overtime, you don't get compensated for that, which basically means if my job requires me to work Monday through Friday, but I come in on Saturday and Sunday, I'm not getting paid for those days, even though I'm at work. That's how the Navy is, though. You can't go clock in. You know, there's no punch in and none of that. There's no slips to sign, bro. You just get paid what you get paid and no matter how hard you work. So I began to, um, what do I want to, I began to acquire bad habits. I began to sleep on a job. I began to come to work late. I began to talk back to people. I just began to do things to try to get out of the Navy as easy as possible. I had didn't Google it, but at the time I was looking up all the possible ways to get out the Navy without a dishonorable discharge. I'm talking about eating soap. Um, but just, just crazy stuff, man. There was so many crazy stories I had heard about that could have helped me get out the Navy. But the only thing that ended up working for me, guys, was the new freaking Jordans that came out one day, right? And like I told you, if you're supposed to be at work Monday through Friday and they call you in Saturday to Sunday, you ain't getting paid for those days. Well, guess who gets called in? Me. Well, you can't say, oh, I can't come when the Navy calls you. You just got to say, yes, sir, I'm on my way, basically. And I wasn't on my way. No, I wasn't. I was actually standing in line trying to get the new six rings. The Jordan six rings had just came out for the first time ever. It was the black um, red and white patent leather six rings, bro. They were so beautiful to me when I first saw them because they was new. You know when something first come out, you you obviously instantly fall in love with it, especially if it's Jordan. But I did fall in love with that shoe and I ended up waiting in line and when I got them shoes, I ended up rocking them shoes instead of going to work. When I finally got done doing whatever I was doing, which was bullshitting, I finally walked into work on that naval ship and I got my ass handed to me, man. They was calling me dirt bag. Um, skater, because in the Navy, if they say that I was a skater, it means that this terminology is so weird. They used to use weird terminology, but I'm trying to think of a way to explain it to you. Basically, somebody who skips work. They were saying, you're a skater and all this stuff. Like They were just dogging me out, right? I'm taking it because I'm in the Navy, so at this point, I didn't seen it all, heard it all. You can't hurt me no more. I, I didn't been broken down before. That's what, the, that's what the military do in boot camp. They break you down so that once you've grown and you're in, established in the world, nobody else can break you down. You've already been broken down before. That's what happened to me or whatever. But after all this stuff happened, man, I ended up going to mass, captain's mass. This is like court. I ended up getting in trouble going to court for being late. So I'm in there and I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm really not nonchalant about the situation. They all asking me questions like, do you really realize what you've done? And do you understand how serious this is, sir? This is the military and all this. And I'm just standing there like, yeah, whatever, whatever. Because little do they know, I never wanted to be on no damn ship in the first place. I was supposed to be with the president. So it was like, you know, no disrespect to y'all and y'all shit, but I was on a destroyer, a DDG. That's the smallest ship 
in the Navy. So I'm tall as ever, big, you know what I'm saying? I want to be free and have space. And here I am living on a ship where I got to duck down all day like this. This is how I walk through the hallway. This is how I walk through the hallway. My bed, I had to share with however many other dudes just wanted to sleep in my bed at the time. If I was at work and come off work, somebody's already sleeping in my bed with their work clothes on and their boots on. So imagine not even being able to have a clean bed when you get off of work. This was the life I lived. Imagine trying to take a shower and it's a public shower so it smells like piss because they piss on the shower floors. Like this, these are the type of things that threw me off about the Navy, you know? My job part, that never really affected me. I can do my job. The Navy work is so easy, anybody can do it. The work will never, like, you will never feel overworked. But it's just the things that go on around you. It ain't even no racism stuff like that. It's just like the disrespect you know what i'm saying everybody wants you to do their work type of stuff and it's like how do i know this ain't for you to do but you telling me to do it that's crazy it just other things like if it wasn't for those things i probably would have still been in the military right now but as you all know i've had many jobs after the military i've been in college so i never got a dishonorable discharge they gave me an honorable discharge but they only did that because of what i did in my past the presidential honor guard all the good stuff that had been written down on my file they had to look at that you know they couldn't just dishonorable discharge me even though i was late for work but long story short i ended up getting the best part of the deal i got what i wanted which was out of the military one and two i got an honorable discharge which enabled me to continue to live my life you know because i know people who actually have dishonorable discharges they can't even get a job at mcdonald's so it's just crazy you know so but anyone that's in my comment section thinking about going to the military if you even almost thinking about it man leave a comment so that i can know and i will try my hardest to contact you through the comment section and let you know how i feel about the situation but if you're not gonna comment and you just want my opinion right now here on video i'm gonna tell you straight up man if there's any other thing in the world you can do do that first okay and then if you don't succeed at that then try the military but do not make the military your first option okay it is never going to be your best option specifically if you're looking for money a way out you know a way out of the system a way out of the hood a way to help your family the military ain't gonna give you them ducats there's other solutions to that but if you really just trying to serve your country and you know be that person then the military is definitely for you i will never hold you back serve your country do what you got to do okay the cj already did it. you know i served my country and i'm here today you know so i'm grateful for everything i've been through i'm truly blessed over everything that i've been through and i took my military bearing from the military you know i'm not a slouchy dude or i'm not a, a nasty individual i walk around with military bearing you know what i'm saying i keep a smile on my face i make sure i'm positive all the time i never bring anybody down and i'm basically i live my life as if i'm still serving my country and i don't want anyone to have anything bad to say about me or my country so that's just how i took it um that's what i took from the military and i think that's one of the best things i could have took from the military because that's lifelong you know that's for eternity i will always have military bearing um but for my reasons on going, the money part, nah, I never got that from the military. But I do love the United States and I love the military for what it stands for. And I could, I hope they continue to uh, support us and never turn on us. So uh, with that being said, guys, this will conclude the story time. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, one last thing, if you are still watching this video, you should comment right now. We want to hear why you used to eat dog food. Now, that's probably a long comment, and you probably ain't going to comment it, but I got something for you. I saved it for the last part of this video, guys. Yes, CJ so cool. Me, I, I used to eat dog food, man. When I was a kid, my grandmother, she had gave us a dog. We was all young. His name was Oscar. He was a Yorkshire Terrier. He was about this little, real little dog, gold and silver hair. He was so beautiful, but he was loud. He barked at anybody who came close to us. He was a lovable dog that we all had, you know, him and our family. We loved him. Um, but he used to eat kibbles and bits. Now, kibbles and bits advertised that on the bag, it was 100% vegetables and it was healthy. It was good for you, right? Now, me being a kid, you know, I think I know it all. So I'm like, yeah, I'm about to get this healthy stuff and I'm about to eat it. Even though it's in the bag with the dog food, you know what I'm saying? But it's healthy because it says it is. It's got veggies in it. 
So yeah, 100% true. I ate some kibbles and bits and I found out the hard way that dog food and human food are nothing in common, bro. Like the gritty taste that I had in my mouth must have lasted a week. You know, like when you eat sand on accident, that stuff is in dog food. I don't know what they put in dog food, but it's nasty and I did eat it. It was trifling as ever, guys. Make fun of me if you want to. I don't really care because I don't eat dog food anymore, but I definitely did have my experience with eating dog food and it was crazy. But hopefully you stayed to the end of this video to catch that. If you didn't, sorry for you, but if you did, much love to you. Until next time, peace. We know lemon soldiers. I thought I told you. We know lemon soldiers. I thought I told you. We know lemon soldiers. I thought I told you. We know lemon soldiers. I thought I told you. We know lemon soldiers. I thought I told you. We know lemon soldiers. I thought I told you. Let's give it a round.